Transporting cargo by sea is the most efficient, cheapest, and safest way. Employment. Currently more than 5,400 container ships cross the oceans every year, carrying everything essential for the world to progress and become what it is today. From supplies to toxic and explosive materials. Proof of this is that around 83% of global cargo is transported by ships. And a large part of it is transported inside containers, which ensures its safety and protects it from the elements. However, because the atmosphere is always changing, this leads to bad weather with strong winds, rain, and unstable sea conditions. Ships sailing through them are at the mercy of these conditions. In extreme events, the ships are shaken in such a way that they end up losing a good part of the containers they were transporting. And usually this happens on the high seas. And when it does, the damage and losses are certain and inevitable. For example, over 3,000 containers fell into the sea in 2020 and more than 1,000 in the first four months of 2021. According to the World Shipping Council, this number is over twice the average containers lost from 2008 to 2019. Experts cite four key reasons for the rise in containers falling into the sea. The ever-increasing design and size of container ships, increasingly severe weather, more stacking of containers on ships, and attempts to cut costs by overloading the ships. Yeah, they're right here. Because ships carry over 17,000 containers on average, it's impossible to know exactly what's inside each one. In cases of containers falling, there could be dangerous, flammable, or biologically hazardous materials like chemicals, fuels, solvents, and radioactive materials. These are usually water-soluble, which means they can quickly mix with seawater and pose a great risk to marine life and nearby populations. That's why, when these events happen, the ship must immediately report and inform its station about what happened as quickly as possible. And at the same time, send the precise geographic coordinates of the location where it happened, so that search vessels can get there as quickly as possible. But if the weather and sea remain very bad when the search vessels arrive, they may be forced to abort the mission or wait until the situation improves, which could take several hours, making the situation even worse. That's what happened with the container ship Malcomfort, which left Singapore bound for the port of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. And it broke in half on July 17, 2013 due to bad weather, sinking with all its cargo of 4,382 containers. The ship likely broke in two from a midsection crack caused by bad weather. Curiously, the stern section, or back part, sank on June 27. The bow, or front part, sank on July 11. As a result of a fire, there were several attempts to salvage the cargo, but all were unsuccessful due to bad weather. The crew of 26 men abandoned the ship in time and were rescued, but the ship took about 1,500 tons of fuel to the bottom of the sea. On the stormy night of November 30th, 2020, the container ship Juan Apus, which left China bound for the United States, encountered a violent storm cell with strong winds and large waves that caused the ship to roll violently, resulting in the loss of 1,816 containers, 64 of which contained hazardous materials that sank. In fact, a large number of the containers sank because of damage and cracks caused by the fall and the impact with the seawater. Estimated losses exceed $200 million. And even the containers that didn't fall into the sea and remained on the ship. A large part of them were severely damaged as a result of the fall or because they were hit by other containers carrying heavier cargo. Plus, several opened and their cargo fell into the sea. Large container ships usually travel with more than 17,000 containers stacked on top of each other, easily reaching over 20 meters in height from the ship's deck. There are several ways to secure those containers, 
and prevent them from falling. Usually metal bars are used, which are tightened very well, to prevent the containers from moving or coming loose. But even with all the countermeasures in really rough seas, they end up coming loose and falling into the sea. And since there are always valuable goods inside them, like cars, luxury decoration items, various machinery, construction materials, among others, the biggest loser always ends up being the owner of the cargo. Recovering containers from the seafloor and bringing them up is very difficult. And the first and main problem is the depth of the sea, making it impossible to send divers to even locate the containers. The only practical means are ROVs, or remotely operated underwater vehicles, which are submersible vehicles controlled and operated remotely by a person or a group of people on board a vessel or on land. They can descend to depths of 4,000 meters and have mechanical arms, lights, sensors, and cameras. Since these vehicles can't bring containers to the surface, they're only used to locate, handle, and attach steel cables to them. So a rescue ship can lift them one by one. It's a very meticulous and delicate task that can take several hours or even days, depending on the skill of the remotely operated vehicle operator and depending on the location, the fall, the number of containers, and the position of each container on the ocean current and how deeply the container is buried on the seafloor. The process of finding and bringing it to the surface can take several months, and there are cases where the containers aren't even found. Imagine if inside one of them is your brand new Mercedes G63, just bought and imported, coming directly from many, many months of saving or your Lamborghini Aventador? But after all, why do some ships end up losing containers in bad weather while others don't? The phenomenon behind this is known as parametric rolling motion. Although it has been known for more than half a century, the fundamental dynamics that create this type of behavior are currently considered to be reasonably well understood and it affects container ships much more due to the geometry of their hulls. Both the part that stays above the waterline as well as the part that stays below the waterline. Also, because the bow and stern are usually wider, such characteristics contribute to the variation in the ship's stability features due to constant changes in the geometry of the underwater hull as waves travel along the ship. Parametric rolling also happens when the waves don't hit the ship head on, but at an angle. The ship starts to rotate in sync with the waves. This abnormal, continuous, and severe rolling not only shifts and eventually drops containers, but also creates powerful torsional and bending forces with the potential to break the ship in half, just like with Mall Comfort. But to prevent this, Weather forecasting plays a fundamental role. Knowing the conditions and the state of the sea is extremely important to avoid areas where the sea is very rough, which poses a risk for containers falling overboard. And going back to the containers, when they are recovered, there usually isn't much that can be done with the cargo since seawater is highly corrosive. If there's a car inside them, besides being severely damaged by the fall, it will also be very rusty. Everything will depend on how long it took to be removed, and usually, nothing that's left can be salvaged. Moreover, the sea pollution from these events is immeasurable, not to mention that many of the containers end up opening on impact and the cargo gets scattered. Tires, cardboard, cars, metals, and more all end up in the sea. By law, if cargo is lost or damaged, the shipping company must reimburse the owner. But that can take some time. Trains are also a very attractive and widely used means of cargo transportation, just like ships. With a slightly higher price per ton of cargo compared to ships, but the trip is slower and takes longer. 
The transportation of large volumes of cargo by ships remains the most attractive, efficient, cheap, and safe method in use today. Even though they are subject to the terrible conditions of the seas, which sometimes cause them to lose some containers, 